What's up, Pacina gang? Today's a big day. It's Cabrio G-Wagon day, and we're doing the G32. Straight from AMG, straight from Japan. Let's go. Today we're riding around in a 1996 G32 AMG, straight from Japan. Man, what a car. This, this gives you unicorn vibes. Whenever you jump in something special like this, who doesn't want a G-Wagon, let alone a G-Wagon Cabriolet? I barely drive it, it has under 100,000 kilometers on it, but whenever I take it out, it's just, everybody just loses their minds. Everybody's asking me if it's custom built. Uh, nobody's really seen these cars. I mean, it's one of the very few non-SGS cars and non, you know, Kunic cars that gives you a real unicorn vibe. Definitely one of my favorite G-Wagons. I have another one on the way right now from Europe, which is finished off in like an almondine red, red type of color. So, man, looking forward to all these uh, G-Wagons being on the road this year. And, and I'm really looking for more, so. Whenever I see a convertible G-Wagon, I'm definitely picking it up. The four-door G-Wagon we're familiar with, popularized by Beverly Hills moms, pales in comparison to the utilitarian feel this G32 emits, which is more similar to the Wolf. That's the modern G-Wagon's predecessor, which was pioneered in the 70s to be the best off-road vehicle for militaries around the world. This G32 received its AMG treatment in Japan, like many other exotic Afaltabach vehicles. This is the result of Japan's late-century glory days, which produced ultra-wealthy businessmen with a penchant for exclusivity. In barely three decades, Japan went from being a war-torn country to becoming an industrial and financial powerhouse. It's a truly beautiful G-Wagon convertible, with an immaculate blue paint that shifts into a purple hue when the sun hits its distinctive body lines. Under the hood is a silky smooth inline six matched to a four-speed automatic transmission. This aggregate is arguably smoother than the more common V8 found in later G-Wagons. Even in South Florida, where flashy cars are the norm, this off-road icon turns heads. When driving this vehicle, your journey to any destination becomes an experience. After coming to North America through Canada, this special G-Wagon has finally found its home at the Patina Collective and is not planning on leaving anytime soon. G-Wagon convertibles in America, very hard to find. There is some, people got them, you know, but they're very hard to find. Beautiful interior. AMG wheels, and the wheels came already changed, so I don't believe these were the period correct wheels for it. A lot of uh, weird aftermarket, quote unquote aftermarket parts on this car that you usually wouldn't find on a car. Like for instance, like the tail lights wouldn't, wouldn't be considered period correct. Some of the, like, you know, the lights in the front, but it fits the car and it looks really, really good. It's just that Japanese touch that's added to it, you know. Japan's always known for its extravagant stuff and different type of tuning that they do, so I accept it because, you know, Japan has its own swag to it. Uh, it has an AMG steering wheel, AMG body kit, it has a nice AMG wing at the top. The AMG exhaust sounds great, you know. Whenever I, I get it into high RPMs, you really hear it. It's a very small motor, so you can't really expect much from it. It's a 3.2, you know, uh, straight six, so. It is what it is, but it has the, the torque and the power it needs to get this thing moving, and it, and it really does move. We're up to like five, six G-Wagon Cabriolets now, so, you know, we're building up the fleet, but this one's a special one. It just has that crazy look, like, ah, uh, no. I'm gonna have a G-Wagon, but with less doors and, you know what I mean? No roof. Two-door, AMG. And it's from Japan, so it doesn't get any better than this, guys. 